Have you ever considered that your public criticism might hurt my feelings? No. If I didn't fall in love, no one could ever betray me like that again. My parents were very upset. Would you ever have married me without a prenup? I thought if I didn't expose myself to any more pain and vulnerability, I could never get hurt. I'm the crazy one in our relationship and nuts, but I am very sensitive. It started out like I'm tired, and then it just became such a tornado of debilitating sadness. Yes. She really got pretty close to rock bottom. Have you cheated on me? <laughs> What do you mean? I was on this total high, and then it was just the lowest of lows. Would you say marriage requires sacrifice? What have you sacrificed for me? Um... Even as a child, John seemed good at everything. Well, I started taking lessons when I was four years old to play the piano. I was the age of most sixth graders, but I was put in eighth grade because I was ahead of my peers. But his life was far from perfect. I know what it's like to be part of a broken family. I know what it's like for drugs and other issues to tear your family apart. His beloved grandmother had died which caused his mother to spiral. Uh, my mother went into a deep depression and it ruined their marriage and just tore our family apart. It led to a really long period where she was estranged from the family and was in a really bad way. With his mother in and out of jail, John looked to his father for guidance. A mother disappeared into over a decade of drugs and despair after my parents got divorced, and I was confused and disoriented. But we ended up staying with our father because he was in a better place to raise us at that time. But when his mother chose drugs over him, John shut himself off from the world. I thought if I didn't expose myself to any more pain and vulnerability, I could never get hurt. If I didn't fall in love, no one could ever betray me like that again. There was one thing that saved him from the darkness. The only thing I allowed myself to really love without reservation was music. When John's career took off, he met Chrissy on the set of his music video. It was at least lust at first sight <laughs> for both of us. And we had instant chemistry. She makes me a little less boring. She's the kind of woman you write songs about. Chrissy knew John's pain. Her own mother had abandoned her in high school, making her insecure. People think that I'm the crazy one in our relationship and nuts, but I am very sensitive. John panicked and dumped Chrissy. His mother's abandonment made him afraid to fall in love. He says, I was really stressed and busy. I'd just be happier single right now. And she was like, no. Chrissy refused to let John go. She knew that he needed her. I'm a bit of a spitfire. I'm a kind of a fighter. As John started to trust Chrissy, his mother unexpectedly returned to his life, but he struggled to forgive her. It took a while, and she really got pretty close to rock bottom, but she eventually got the help she needed. When he saw the great relationship Chrissy had with her mother, who she had forgiven, he knew he needed to forgive his own mom. She's doing much better now and is happy and healthy. The key was never to lock her up. It was to get her the help she needed. With their family all together, John and Chrissy got married and started planning for kids but it wasn't easy. I knew I could see myself living with her and spending time with her forever. I knew I could envision us having kids together. I'm very much in love with this woman. John and I were having trouble. We would have kids five, six years ago if it happened, but my gosh, it was, it's been a process. We've seen fertility doctors. When they were finally blessed with a baby girl, Luna, John finally felt he had the perfect family. It shows you another level of love when you become a father. And it's not just for your kids. I think it deepens your love for your partner. But things were far from happy. Chrissy was struck with postpartum depression and began to spiral. It started out like, I'm tired, and then it just became such a tornado of debilitating sadness. Yes. I was on this total high, and then it was just the lowest of lows. And I just felt bad for feeling bad, and I felt guilt for feeling guilty. And, and it was just kind of like this endless cycle. It just felt like nobody was talking about postpartum depression. Like it was even hard for me to say the word depression. John saw his wife's sadness and grew worried that she would leave just like his mother did. There's so much that's dependent on you. You really forget about yourself and you forget how to take care of yourself. I remember being so frustrated at myself for feeling frustrated and then that would pile up. John remembered being that little boy abandoned by his mother and he knew he couldn't let that happen to his kids. Chrissy's going through postpartum depression and you just see different sides of that person and it deepens and strengthens your relationship. He helped Chrissy get treatment and supported her when she needed him the most. Being a good husband is about communicating and listening to what your partner needs and wants. John, you were there for every bit of it and you helped me through everything. And when they had their second child, Miles, 
they had the strength to face whatever came their way. It changes your priorities when you have two young kids to take care of. You think about your time differently, you think about the world you want to build differently. I'm always thinking about how to be the best dad and the best husband I can be. Today, John's family is closer than ever. And she's in a great place now, and we're all very close now. It's remarkable to see the turnaround. I truly have the most incredible husband on the planet. You completely made me a woman. We've grown together. Chrissy supports women who are recovering from postpartum depression. Her biggest impact may be the way that she proves that just by being the person you are, you can make a difference. And John focuses on being the best role model for his children. When I think about the kind of father I want to be, a lot of times I think about the example my father said. We do everything together here. Chrissy and I both cook together, and they see us doing stuff together all the time and don't think of it as mom cooks and dad doesn't, or vice versa. I love being a dad. I love seeing my kids' face light up when I come home from work. I love playing with them. Every moment, we have so much fun together. John shows us that when you forgive your parents' mistakes, you are able to learn from them. I'm so proud of my family. I'm so proud that I have a wife and two kids that I'm so in love with and so connected to. Our challenge is to make sure they grow up appreciative and we want them to be good people. And when we become a strong role model for our children, we can pave the way for a better future. It's basically about how we'll all make mistakes, but we'll like grow together and be there for each other. We were all made to love, and I found the key to success, the key to happiness, is opening your mind and your heart to love.